Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, this will be the second virtual lecture or online lecture we have for for my students in IUTT, Civil Engineering Semester 6. I hope uh, everyone is doing fine and I hope you got uh, to check the first lecture we've done previously. Um, I also need to apologize that I, I, I didn't um, uh, deliver uh, the lecture sooner than that. Um, as a result of uh, a, a medical issue I, I got last week. Um, today we're, we're going to have uh, uh, an example regarding the parking studies. Um, we're going to work out that example and uh, I hope you put uh, all your comments or uh, any thoughts you have um, during our uh, topic in Google Classrooms. So first, uh, we need to review what we've, uh, what we've done before. Uh, we talked about the uh, parking studies. So regarding the parking studies, we, uh, we got to uh, three different uh, methods we have. Three methods we have uh, regarding the parking studies. Um, and uh, you need to review that before we go into the example. Um, so let's get started with the example we have uh, with a little bit of a review. So we have an overview um, of the parking studies. So the parking is actually one of the major problems created by increasing the road traffic. Whenever we have uh, increasing in the road traffic, we have a parking problems. So it's also an impact. So it's an impact of transport development. Whenever you develop your transportation system or your urban transportation system, uh, you're going to get the, the parking problems um, and issues. So um, whenever we have uh, availability of less space in urban areas, also that it's also uh, linked with the uh, impact of transport development. So uh, increase the demand of parking spaces. Whenever we develop the, uh, the urban areas, we need... Uh, more, more people need uh, to park their, their cars in, um, in those areas. And so this we can call it the demand, which demand at talab. So uh, it also affects the mode if, of uh, the mode choice. Uh, if we have, for example, um, the, the first choice is your, uh, your, own, your own car. And the other choice is taxi. And the third one is public transport. Uh, in this case, uh, in this case, uh, if if you're going to uh, to travel or to go in any area that you cannot park your own car, you might take a taxi or even a public transportation. If there is a public transportation, smooth and easy and quick, maybe this will be the choice for people. So. Uh, the availability of parking also affects your um, transportation mode choice and that we've taken it in uh, the last semester course, transportation engineering. It also has a great economical impact. So parking studies before taking any measures. So measures, measure is something that we do to improve conditions. We need actually to get data regarding the availability of parking spaces. Uh, why would I improve the parking uh, issue or create an issue? It's not even exist. Uh, so whenever I have less parking space, yeah, we can, we can in, in, in that particular uh, time, we can say that we need to improve or um, develop our parking um, issue. So extent of its usage. 
So we have a lot of parking spaces, but uh, it's not enough. So that's also, uh, it could be the case. And also I need to study the demand for parking. Sometimes it, uh, if we have here uh, time and here we have the demand and uh, the demand it goes over time so we need also to improve our parking spaces and also it's important the parking studies to estimate the parking fees uh, if you have a parking lot and you're gonna rent it for parking spaces you need actually to estimate your fees so to make your parking feasible First of all, it means do jadwa. Uh, parking surveys intended to uh, to provide all this information. What informations? The parking, the the uh, survey data we need. So since the duration of parking varies uh, with different vehicles, uh, several statistics are used to access the parking need. So not all vehicles. Uh, park for the same duration of time people sometimes park for uh, like seven hours um, especially when they have to park their cars um, nearby their their working offices or something but uh, if you're going to a shopping mall or a market it's gonna be much less than that so what are those parking statistics? First, we have parking accumulation. Parking accumulation. Yes, uh, tarakumi. The number of vehicles parked at a given instant of time, and also it's normally expressed by accumulation curve. Accumulation curve. Munhana tarakumi. Accumulation curve is a graph obtained by plotting the number of bays, number of bays occupied with respect to the time, with respect to the time. So here we got uh, our accumulation table, not the accumulation curve. This we call it accumulation table, as we can see here. It's accumulation table. Here we have the period uh, from 4 a.m. up to 6, from 6 to 8, from 8 to 10, 10 to 12, 12 to 2 p.m. And from 2 to 4, 4 to 6, 6 to 8, and 8 to 10. So um, this is the arrival. Uh, those vehicles uh, counted actually between 4 and let's put those erased okay so um, between 4 and 6 a.m. we have 25 vehicles parked entered the parking space or the parking lot we have and from 6 to 8 we have 50 from 8 to 10 which is actually um, the time of the starting uh, Working uh, hours. Working hours starts from eight to ten. So a lot of vehicles we have on time. Uh, from ten to to twelve p.m. we have fifty, hundred. Next fifty and next two hours twenty five. Next two hours twenty five. And now it's much less. Nobody will go enter the uh, inside this parking lot. It's it's a little bit late, so only 10 vehicles. Here we have the accumulation. First, it's like the accumulation, the summation of those. Here we have only 25, but from 4 up to 8, so we're going to take this combined. Combined, we have 25 plus 50, so we have 75, and then... Uh, from 4 up to 10, from 4 up to 10, the accumulation will be like 25 and also 50 and 250. So we have 325 
and so on. So this is the total. It's like um, 585, I guess. Yes. Um, and here we have the departure. At the same time, so from 4 up to 6 a.m., only five vehicles depart. We have departure, leave. Who do five vehicles who leave uh, left the parking lot in this time? From six to uh, to eight, we have fifteen. From eight to ten, twenty-five. So thirty, fifty, seventy-five, and you can see here from four to six. And uh, in outside countries, it's actually the end of working hours for the daily working hours. Uh, people go home in this time from between four and six. So a lot of vehicles leave in this time. And also uh, uh, um, less, less than that left between six and eight and uh, 65 from eight to 10. The accumulation will be worked out the same. So here we have 5, and from 4 to 8, we have 20. From 4 to 10, we have, um, yeah, will be 25, which is, uh, sorry, 45, which is 5, plus 15, plus 25. We have 45. Now we, we got actually the, uh, the accumulation. The accumulation will be, the arrival accumulation, accumulation, cumulative arrivals, uh, minus the cumulation departures. So it will be <coughs> it will be the cumulation of the arrivals minus the cumulation cumulative of the departures so it's a minus relation and here we have 25 minus 5 will be 20 and here we have 75 minus 20 will be 55 here we have um, 325 minus uh, 45 will be 280 and so on and we can get something we call it the accumulation factor. And it's going to be uh, this divided for each for each period of time. It will be this divided by the number of uh, of parkers, which is five hundred eighty five. So here we have if we divided the 20 over 585 we'll get this and here if we divided the 55 divided by that we'll get this so it's easy by this uh, formula <coughs> um, here we have the accumulation curve accumulation curve Here we have the accumulative arrivals from four, uh, from 4 a.m. up to 10 p.m. or 25, so it's the same. And here we have the number of vehicles, so this is the cumulative arrivals, and here we have the uh, cumulative departures, and here we have the accumulation. This minus this. This will be the uh, the accumulation so accumulation arrivals accumulation departures and the accumulation sorry sorry uh, cumulative arrivals cumulative departures and the accumulation um, another thing of the parking statistics uh, we call it parking volume which is the total number of vehicles parked at a given duration of time um, Actual volume of vehicles entered in the area uh, is recorded. So the number of vehicles at any 
uh, a particular given time. And we still have park and turnover. This park and turnover is actually the ratio of number of vehicles parked in a duration to number of parking bays available, expressed as number of vehicles per hour per bay. So it's the parking volume divided by duration, and this all in all um, divided by the number of bays available. Once we get uh, into our example, it will be very, very simple. Um, this very important, the parking load. Parking load um, gives the area under the accumulation curve um, can also be obtained by simply multiplying the number of vehicles occupying parking areas at each time interval with the time interval. So it's like the number of vehicles time by the time interval. So the unit for parking load will be vehicle hours. For example, if I have one vehicle, two, and number three, and this parked for like two hours, one hour, and here one and a half. So this will be two, here we have two, and here we have 4.5. Okay, so this will be the parking load. It will be vehicle hours, vehicle hours. How many vehicles and each vehicle, how long um, uh, it's been parking there. And the average parking duration, it's actually the ra ratio of to uh, total vehicles hours to the number of vehicles parked. So it's simply to know the average parking duration, to know uh, what is the average. I know that a lot of vehicles parked in, in this parking lot, but I need to know what is the average duration for, for those vehicles. Not every, every vehicle just park the same duration. People park for five minutes, like for hours, or sometimes for five hours. I need to know the average duration, so to put my expectations. So here we have to put our parking load, which is actually vehicle hours, divided by the parking volume, which is vehicle. So the unit will be here in hours. Parking index. Uh, if we need actually to, to expect or to know how efficient, how good is uh, our parking lot performs, we check the parking index. Sometimes they call it occupancy or efficiency. And it's the ratio number of bays occupied in a, in a time duration to total space available. Again, the ratio of number of bays occupied to total space available. Okay, for example, I have three parking spots. Okay, so the total space available is three. But I have, sometimes this will be actually benefit three, three or four different vehicles, someone just parked, not all the day, just for three hours, and another one comes here and park for two hours, and another one parked for three hours. So I have more efficient uh, usability of the parking spot uh, than just someone just parked uh, for, for the, the whole day or the entire day. It gives an aggregate measure of how effectively the parking space is utilized. Utilized, yani stugallat. And the parking index, simply, it's actually the parking load times 100% divided by the number of bays or the parking spots available dur during a duration. 
taken this example, um, which is shown here. This is a very simple one. We've taken it before, but we'll go to this one. Uh, here you can uh, check the um, park and surveys again, which is uh, in and out and license plate. These are the uh, pros and cons. We have advantages and disadvantages. And here we have our example. Here we can say it's, it's like uh, park and uh, plate lesson. So, um, we have this schedule. Um, usually, we, we do this kind of um, table uh, if we have in and out survey or license plate survey. So, here we have uh, from 8 a.m. up to 6 p.m here from 8 a.m. up to 6 a.m. and here we have here we have the arrivals from 8 up to 6 and here we have the departures from 8 up to 6 p.m. okay so the arrivals at 8 a.m. is actually all of that which is 71 vehicle all of that, they actually arrived in 8 a.m. I need you to concentrate. So, and all of the all of those vehicles, the 71, they arrived in 8, but they depart, they left in different in different hours. Three of the 71, three of them, they they actually left. So, if I have 71 vehicle arrived at 8 a.m., three of them, they left the parking at 8 a.m., three of them at 9, eight of them at 10, seven at 11 a.m., at 12 p.m., 10 vehicles left. All of these statistics actually from this which is the 71 vehicles that actually arrived on 8 a.m. So this is the hours. When did they, de uh, did they leave the parking lot? And if we come to 9 a.m., I have 72 vehicles arrived. Okay, at 9 a.m., I have 72 arrived at 9. But when did they leave, actually? No one will leave 8 a.m. because I'm already at 9 a.m. So this will be not usable here. So you, you see that it is empty. Why? Because when you arrive 9, you can only leave at 9 or later than that. No one will come 9 a.m. and go at 8 a.m. Okay, so it's, it's logical, it's normal. It's common sense, okay? So between those seven, 72 vehicles, two of them left the parking lot at nine, five of them left at, ne at 10, and so on. So at 10 a.m., I have 73. 73. Two of them left at the same hour, so they just get into the parking lot and stay for one hour or less and left the parking lot and the same thing for for everything here okay and here we have the total departure here we have only three and here we have three of those who came on 8 a.m three of them left at 8 and two of those who arrived on 9 a.m two of them left at 9 so this will be the cumulative of the departures. 
it's like summation simply summation maybe the example in your final exam will be without these so you can just calculate them from here so 3 plus 3 plus 8 plus 7 plus 10 plus etc we have 71 and the same uh, the same thing for the vertical columns and now we have uh, this this table is very important here we have the arrivals which is this column you will find it here and here we have the departure just the same 3 5 15 and here we have the arrival arrivals um, minus the departures 71 minus 3 70, uh, 65 72 minus 5 67 37 minus and and so forth and so forth uh, so on so even though you have negative values it's fine just put it there and now we have the accumulation okay Here we have the accumulation. Here we have 68. And now we have 68 plus that will be 133. 33. And plus 22, it will be 157. Plus 93 will be 250. Plus how much? Zero. Why is that? Because at that particular point, when we have arrivals and departures, we have the same number. So we have here zero. And here we have 250. You will be sometimes given and you can check that maximum number of 100%. And it should be given actually. When you survey, when you, when you make the survey, you actually calculate the total number of parking space and it's given okay and you can see that if you have this accumulation so you have reached the maximum parking spots and here we have more departures until we get zero and here we have the total so you can see here you can see that the total number of arrivals and total number of departures much more than the parking spots I have only 250 parking spots but those people who uh, came and went in different um, hours the total of them is 122 so if you have a parking lot uh, which maybe uh, for example um, it has a hundred parking lots or parking spots or parking bays it doesn't mean that you only will serve a hundred vehicle it will be much more than that because people are coming and leaving and another people uh, or vehicles uh, use the parking lot and here we have the parking index which as we talked before the parking lot divided by uh, the um, number of bays available here we have 68 divided by a hundred uh, 2050 we're gonna get this and 135 divided by 250 we're gonna get that and at 250 divided by 250 we're gonna get 1 times 100% will be 100 and here we have the parking accumulation the parking accumulation so starting from 8 a.m. with 68 vehicles and we get to zero at 6 p.m. or 18. 
So the duration of operation from 8 to 6 a.m. is 11 hours. Now we need to get the um, the um, something we call it the uh, percentage. Uh, sorry, the average duration and the parking turnover to check our efficiency. To check our parking lot efficiency, how efficient our parking lot is is performing. Okay. So we know from now that our parking lot is efficient because I have a 250 parking spot and I had two, uh, 422 vehicles entered that particular parking. So it's efficient. If it's less 250 here, it's going to be not that efficient. We, how to know if it's efficient or not? If you reach total number of vehicles more than the total number of parking spaces. And we're going to check it with the parking turnover. So now we need to know the average duration and the parking turnover. To know that, we go to this table. We have actually... Um, those vehicles uh, who parked for less than one hour for less than one hour we'll assume average duration for those people who parked for less than one hour because actually we made our uh, uh, survey for per hours so we know that some people uh, will leave maybe after five minutes some of them 30 minutes for the first hour. We'll assume that all of those with less than hour of parking, we'll assume that they, that they park for 45 minutes. So for like point for, uh, 75 hours. So now we need to go to less than one hour diagonal. بشكل قطري. We can go to this table and go diagonally. Three, two, two, here's seven, ten, fifteen. Sorry, I couldn't see here. Fifteen um, and one, sixteen, seventeen. Sorry, again, to calculate, diagonally, 3, 5, 7, 10, 15, 18, 20, 21, 22, 24. So, this will be less than 1 hour diagonally, and times 0.75, we'll get 18 vehicle hours. This is the parking load. Parking load. Parking load is the number of vehicles multiplying by, by how long they parked. We know those 24 vehicles, they park for less than one hour. Why? Because th those three vehicles, those three vehicles came at eight and and left, uh, left at 8 and those two vehicles came at 9 9 a.m. and also left at 9 those two vehicles also came in 10 a.m. and left at 10 a.m. so I'm not sure whether they stayed for like 59 minutes and left so less than one hour or maybe they just get inside and and just uh, leave and just leave for five minutes or ten minutes maybe so we assume that they stayed for 0.75 hour as we mentioned here so 24 multiply uh, multi uh, multiply 0.75 hours so here we have 18 
18 uh, vehicle hours and one duration diagonal one hour duration diagonal will be this three times five times six fifteen four three all these we'll be having 56 so for how many hours for one hour so this will be multiplied by one we'll get 56 and again for two hours we have 62 times two hours and here we have 64 times three hours here we have 58 times four hours 44 times five hours 36 times six hours 31 those parked for seven hours 17 those for eight hours 19 for nine hours eight uh, 11 for 10 hours and those for less than one hour very 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 simple the total number of vehicle 422 and this is the parking load so the total number of vehicles times the hours they parked 1692 so what is the percentage of vehicle less than one hour 24 divided by 422 you're gonna get only six uh, percent of those vehicle who parked for one hour um, so the total vehicle hours this is the parking load hundred sixty uh, hundred uh, one thousand six hundred ninety two vehicle hours the total park vehicle is 422 the parking volume not the parking space the parking volume the average duration will be total number of vehicle hour uh, total parking uh, total parked vehicle so 169 uh, 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 1692 uh, divided by 422 we're gonna get that the average duration is four hours four hours the parking turnover how efficient our parking is performing is by dividing the total vehicle divided by the parking space and the total uh, parking volume is 100, uh, 422 divided by the parking space which is 250 and here we have the parking turnover is 1.7 what does it mean 1.7 it means that I have 70 percent usability of the parking space that we reused it we reused it so I have 250 but I actually used that to park a 422 vehicles and here we have space and here we have vehicles so here we have uh, a very efficient uh, parking lot now we can check our revenue uh, if I need to know how much revenue I, I, I can get from this parking uh, if we actually set that the first hour of the parking which means those who part for less than one hour they will pay for the first hour only 200 re uh, Yemeni reals and the following hours for how long every hour will move you will pay more a hundred real so if you park for one hour or less, you will pay for 200 real. Uh, for two hours, you will pay 200 plus 100, so it will be 300, and so forth. So now, 
this you, you, you can get it from here get back here and please check if those numbers are correct or not and if you have any discussion please and again please go to Google Classrooms and put your um, comments there anyone who will not uh, make a a present sign like I've seen the lecture I'm done I'm okay uh, I've seen it so put it there under the lecture so I can tell whether you are present or absent and I'm going to actually to deliver the um, the carry marks and the coursework at the middle of next week anyone who will not comment and discuss with us the topics there they will lose marks please I need you to collaborate with us and whenever and whatever your question just put it there I'll make our discussion for tomorrow inshallah uh, from 4 p.m. Friday it's gonna be 24 I guess of July uh, from 4 p.m. up to 9 p.m. whenever you have any comment just put it there I'll comment as soon as possible thanks for listening and I hope you're actually uh, you're listening to, to all the information you have and we still have at least two lectures one will be um, for the uh, a case study for traffic volume and another one will be um, discussion regarding your numbers and result from your uh, survey which is very very important survey you know that um, uh, they actually made uh, measures and improvements to at tahrir and Shara Ali Abdul Mughni which actually not based on data which might uh, lead us to a disaster in a tahrir um, establishing a roundabout um, semi roundabout there maybe not the the, uh, the good option for, for us there so we're gonna check our, uh, your uh, traffic volume study there and the parking volume uh, parking survey there and w we're gonna get uh, result and discussion and comments and, and recommendations um, I'll put an extra lecture which is really really important uh, ex uh, extra lecture um, maybe uh, w will not be um, covered for the exam it's for your information it's for the uh, intersection design and also traffic signal design thanks for listening and See you next lecture, inshallah.